everyone and welcome to my channel and also welcome to the third and last color theory where we today will discuss how to use colors because I thought that now when we know how to mix them it could be fun to talk a little bit also about how to use them. Now colors are probably the first thing that we notice about a painting and also the biggest factor to if we will like a painting or not. So if you see a painting that includes your favorite colors and overall mood, you will probably like the painting, even if the subject matter maybe wouldn't be something that you normally care about. And the same, of course, the other way around. Um, if you see a painting that uses colors that you really don't care for, then it doesn't matter if the painting is one of the most skillfully executed paintings that you have otherwise seen. But if you don't like the colors, you will probably be, yeah, it's good, but you wouldn't want to have it on your wall. So colors and color combinations is very personal. And also more often than not, it's the color combination or colors in a painting that will make you like a painting or not more than the actual subject matter. So I hope that this video today will help you to choose colors and combine colors together if you're unsure how to you know choose your colors or how to combine them so I have a few tips and tricks that can help you with this and also then you can like have a plan before you start painting so that if you know for example that you want to include at least one color and you know which one then these tips and tricks today can help you to choose the other colors to combine with that one and also then you know do you want a happy painting a bright and colorful painting or do you want a more moody and more mysterious painting so what colors then to choose uh, to get those results and if you are following these tips today or from today's video then you will know that all your colors will work together and your result will be a harmonious painting and then it doesn't matter if it's bright and happy or maybe moody and a little bit um, you know more darker colors but let's start with an example of bright and colorful versus moody and darker before we go into how to combine colors together here in my big art journal i have this painting of lupines and you can see there's bright reds, bright oranges, very bright green. And this makes up for a very bright and colorful uh, art. Which I would say you can see or feel the sunlight and it's, you know, it's happy, bright. And I have another example also, flowers, uh, magnolias. I hope you can see the colors from the iPad screen. Uh, in the background there's blues and greens and I have... In the flowers there's pink, red and a little, little bit of bright green. So no muted colors, just very intensive bright colors. And this also, I think, makes for a very happy, well, if you can say that, like a happy painting, but it's, it's colorful and it's bright. And then if we compare this to a more moody painting, more, you know, painted with darker colors, we have this one. It's a birch forest in winter. And this is almost only painted out of neutral, so pale browns and pale blues, a little bit of purple, and then paints grey to, uh, to paint in the forest. So this is a whole different mood to it. No sunshine, it's grey. And uh, for me this is very restful for the eyes because there are not a lot of colours. So it's nice to, or it's easier to choose colours for your painting if you, before you start, already know what mood uh, you want to describe in your painting. Do you want happy and sunshine or do you want more moody and more mellow? So that already can then influence the, you know, the colors that you choose. If you want to paint a moody uh, or more mellow landscape like this, then you should not use, for example, bright blues and, and bright oranges colors because that that will not result in a moody painting and the same with the flowers if you really want to paint you know sunshine bright colors if i would have done this with a lot of muted colors then the whole 
feeling of the piece would be different. So colors are very an important part of how the whole outcome of your painting will be. But now let's turn return to the color charts. So first up we have monochromatic and that means that you choose only one color uh, to paint in and it can of course be any color from the color wheel it can also be brown and and only uh, you know different kinds of grays but because I love blue I have of course chosen to have examples with uh, with blue because that is what I normally paint a lot in and first up if I put it this way I have this painting, Flying Avocats. Now, this was first only a pen and ink drawing, but then I wanted something, something colorful, something to make it, you know, uh, pop up. So I decided to choose a very bright, light blue. And the only thing I did, I just put down a wash behind the birds. And I think it is very effective. You don't need a lot of colors always to make a subject interesting. Just one color can be enough to give you, you know, that one pop of color can make the whole painting very interesting, especially if you otherwise then have, you know, paint in black and white. And I have another one, a landscape. And here you can see that it's not only like one hue of the color, but I have used everything, some really dark paints gray, and then to blue and to white. And I count uh, you know, the blue and paints gray here as one color because paints gray is made out of black and ultramarine blue. So I have also used ultramarine blue. So I count this as one color. But so you can see, you know, from dark to white, you can make up a whole, a whole scene, a whole landscape. And this you can you know, would be actually, I think, a quite a nice experiment to do with all the colors. You know, do something similar and do it in all the different colors and see what, you know, all the different colors evokes for feelings in you. Because then you also learn what colors you like and what colors give you what kind of, uh, you know, feedback from yourself when you look at it. Okay, next then we have complementary colors. And uh, this is very useful to think of when you are painting. Not only to use these two colors or any two colors that makes up com a complementary combination, but also if you are painting a painting with more colors in it, and then if you ever struggle with what to add to enhance the colors that you have or what colors to use in your shadows and so on then to remember the complementary rule is or rule but uh, tip is always very nice because if you have oranges or you have you know something orange and then you want to darken it and or to you know have something against it to make it more orange then you can always use blue and so on for all the colors in the color wheel i have an example let me again put this away and I have this one. Now, here I have painted all our primaries with first just with a black shadow or use black color as a shadow. Then I have painted the complementary colors to each one of them and then a neutral made out of the complementary colors. And if I now do, for example, choose or chooses uh, the the red. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this red uh, probably, at least for me, looks the most red. Then comes this, and this looks much duller. But it's the exact the same color that I have painted it with. It's only when it's next to black, next to green, and next to a, a neutral made out of green, then the green will enhance the red, and the other way around, of course. So that is why a shadow made of black will dull your color. But if you make a shadow that uh, includes the complementary color, like here when I made a neutral, but a green neutral, it will enhance your color and also make the shadow more deep and more lively. So this is a good example of how 
using complementaries can enhance the other color. And when speaking about the shadows here, for example, I have made some lemons. And the first lemon I have just both made darker with black color and also I have only black color uh, in the shadow. And this compares to the other ones. I hope you agree that this looks a little bit flat and boring. Whilst when I have used purple both for the shadowing of the lemon and in the shadow, it looks more deeper and more uh, pleasing. So here I have used black mixed with purple for the shadow. Here I have pure purple and on the last one I have made a neutral out of purple. Now this bright purple is maybe also a little bit too cartoonish but I wanted to add it just to you know prove my point. But these two where you have make either mixed black with purple for the shadow or uh, neutral made out of purple that will you know make the lemon look more yellow and the shadows looks look looks more real and the same I did for an um, apple and an orange so green in the shadow or around and bluish tones for an orange that will you know put uh, make the orange and make the apple uh, pop more and to illustrate it even more here to the right I have used like only colors that are close to each other so I have the green of the pears I have a blue background also a bluish purpley uh, table you know all the shadows and it's very nice colors nice color combination but if you would like to make the pear pop a little bit more make something you know uh, something more interesting than adding a little bit of red somewhere in your painting either in the you know uh, on the tablecloth or something in the background or here I have chosen just to do it uh, in, in the in the shadows and a little bit of the bow this will make the green seem more bright uh, of the of the fruit and the same I have done with apples here below so in this one I have only used browns and blues and then the apples are it's still a very nice color combination but maybe also a little bit boring and then here I have made added green both in the background and also for excuse me for the bowl and then I also even added some red tones in um, in the shadows so this for me will make the apples uh, look more more bright and more red now you don't have to if you have other colors in your still life that you want to paint so you don't have to paint in the background green like I have done here or the bow but if you add green somewhere in some shadow or uh, in a pattern somewhere it will still make the red you know pop out more and then if you put this away and take some artwork here I have a small landscape where I have used pale uh, blue both in the water and the sky but the main focus point is of course the autumn forest and all the dark yellow and orangey colors in the forest are enhanced because of the pale blue you know surrounding it so this is a very nice way of using only two colors in your painting so the orange versus the blue and then I have made a small or I had a small forest and here I have been playing with with yellow and purple so this is maybe not a very conventional color combination but it makes up for quite a interesting um, whole so again to make a small painting like this and then use all the different uh, combination that you can have of complementary colors can also give you ideas for what to use you know in bigger paintings and bigger artworks so this is a fun way of experimenting with uh, just using two colors and using the complementary colors for, for that okay next after complementary colors then we have split complementary or also uh, two complementary colors or double complementary colors but I didn't have any 
or I do not have any examples of that. But depending on how you choose your complementaries, then I would recommend to use like the warmer colors uh, in the foreground and the cooler colors in the background, just to because there becomes quite a lot of colors to still have like a balance in your colors. But for the split complementary, I do have an example. And split complementary just means that you take one of your colors that you want to use and then instead of choosing straight up the opposite on your color wheel, so the complementary, you choose the color that is just on either side of the complementary color. And this will give you three colors that are always will look very harmonious and work very well together. And then of course it works uh, for all the colors. So if you know that you have, for example, this bright green, then to use uh, a red that is maybe a little bit more orangey and then a red that is a little bit more purplish those three would also work well very well together or you have yellow and instead of using a, a clean purple you use a more bluish purple and a more reddish purple to go together with it and so on you know travel around the uh, the color wheel and uh, my example for that I have here in my again in my art journal that was for next here this one so two avocats again and here I have orange I have purple and I have uh, a blue in the background and even if they're normally a color that I maybe wouldn't combine but here in a like late autumn scene it works very well where you have old grass and you have you know, when the trees are bare of leaves, especially in Finland, where we have our birch trees, there can be a purplish tint to the forest. So the purplish tint in the forest together with dry grass and then, you know, the blue of the water reflecting the sky. It's a very nice color combination and it works well together. So if you know that you want to use one color, then this way looking at your color wheel and then choosing for example a split complementary can give you then a combination that you can trust that will work out in your painting okay next we have triadic colors now these are colors that are spaced evenly from each other on the color wheel and the three that i chose for example here now are the secondary colors so you have orange green and purple in my painting example I have the primary colors so here I have red or a little bit pinkish red I have yellow and then some blue in the sky so three different colors mixed together and I have tried to avoid getting you know, any green where the uh, clouds and, and the yellow meet and also I have tried to avoid here in the water where I have used uh, a little bit of the blue so that I don't get purple because I really wanted it just to be the uh, you know the the red together with the uh, with the uh, <laughs> lemon with the yellow and uh, this was uh, the other one that I also did and here you can see that I have even less of the red so the color that is most is this uh, paints gray and that is of course a bluish a bluish gray and then I have the uh, the yellow and the red it's quite muted so it's quite only a little bit of the yellow and the red together with quite a lot of the paints gray but because I have no greens and uh, no purples no orange in that way uh, it again becomes quite harmonious color and it works together as a picture And then we have last, we have analogous colors. And that means that you use uh, two, three or four colors from the color wheel that are all sitting next to each other. So now this is probably the color combination that I use the most. Also because I use so much of uh, brown, different brown colors because of, uh, you know, wildlife, birds and wildlife. Uh, this is often a color scheme that at least I think works very well and I just I just reach to what it's often and here for example I have again one of my small forest scapes here I have green 
blue and purple so it's on this side of the color wheel and then here now if you would like to add some contrast then i because we have a lot of greens and a little bit of purple then maybe add some flowers in bright red or bright yellow that could give a pop of interest but because i thought of a late evening with that you know purple heather uh, on the hills i decided to keep it you know very simple and with only these colors and then another example i have for birds since i paint a lot of birds is this magpie now i have blues and greens added a little bit of green and then even some purple here uh, in the tail and you can see that it works very well together and also with this i wanted to show you the the use of black or not use of black in paintings now i did this one as well a little bit faster but anyway just to show you this i painted with black color both black in the branch black in the bird and then just added a little bit of color and in this with this magpie i have no black color at all uh, yeah, well, the only black is in the uh, paints gray mix, but otherwise it's paints gray, uh, burnt amber mixed with ultramarine blue to make this very dark, nice color. And then I have just washers on top with uh, clear blue and clear green to give it, you know, the pop of color. And the same, just blues and uh, darker blues in, in, the, in the wings and in the tail. And then, of course, brown colors for the branch and also just greens and browns for the background. So here I hope to, when I said in my last video that I don't like to use black as it is for uh, wildlife and nature painting, this is the reason because this for me looks flat, whilst this looks deep and more realistic. But that said, I also have an example of when I have used black in another painting this is a kingfish I did a few years back and here I have used black in the background and in this instance I think black works beautifully because it is you know makes a flat surface but in this case it is a very nice contrast to the bright colors of the bird so here they instead of working against what you want to achieve here it enhances what I wanted to achieve so I just wanted to show you this example when you know how to use the color black, uh, where it you know where when to avoid it and when it can really enhance uh, your painting. Another example of uh, not using black. I almost forgot about that. I had it here, blackbird, and here I have used both the, you know, no black color at all. It's only. Burnt Umber with Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of green, you know, to make to make the feathers of, of this bird so that it will still look dark, but also still keep, you know, the depth. And here also I have then put it against quite an orangey background. So you have the blue in the bird and you have the uh, earthy orangey tones in the background. So it, here I've also made use of the complementary colors. Okay, and then, so my favorite use of colors are usually, as I already said, these analogous, and I also like to use the complementary colors. Uh, and otherwise, you know, using only a few colors, that is what we also call like a limited palette. And I really love using only a few colors in my paintings. Uh, here, for example, is another painting that I have done. And the way I chose the colors for this painting is absolutely only from the bird. So I knew I wanted to paint this bird. And then when I wasn't sure what colors to use, you know, in the background, I decided to only use colors that I could see in the bird. So I decided I wanted a warm, a warm feeling to or a warm atmosphere in the painting. So instead of then choosing uh, the bluish or colder colors from the back, I decided to choose all the different warm earthy tones from the belly. So I put the bird on a 
on a tree with very dark warm browns and then I chose the same colors these beige pale neutrals from the belly I chose to also put in the background and then the only way to add a little bit of of blue you know so that the only blue is not on the back I made some splatters with the same blue colors as in the bird all around just to you know draw it all together so this is you know one way of choosing color so if you know your you know what you're gonna paint you know the subject then let take colors from the sub subject and uh, use those colors for your whole painting that's one way of uh, of doing it and one way that I especially for nature and wildlife works very well. So there we have it. I hope some of these tips can help you to combine your colors. And also I can almost guarantee that if you use these few tips and tricks, then you will always uh, get a result that is harmonious within your painting. Now, if you want more in depth about how to use these, then if you only uh, type in, you know, uh, color harmony, so how to use colors in YouTube, you can find a lot of YouTubers who have different examples and using them, you know, a different way. So there's a lot to learn if you want to. But anyway, I hope this could be a little bit of help if you are unsure of how to combine your color. And now, as I have said before, take out your paper your paint and your brushes and start experiments make a painting out of only one color add a complementary color uh, try or, and use only colors next to each other try to use the three evenly spaced or split complementary just have fun and play and that way you will find which color combinations that you find the most attractive and then if you have have already a painting and you think it needs something and you're not sure what then look at this and see if this can give you an idea of oh if I then add this maybe that will not destroy the painting but enhance it so anyway I hope it was useful thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you next week with something else I am not sure what yet because i have a long list of topics i want to uh, that i want to go through so if you have any suggestion for me what to do next then please leave comments in the comment box below so thank you so much for watching again and i will see you next week bye